Good morning and welcome again to Caddis Island County Park inside the Cooper Environmental Center. My name is Megan Zorn, Senior Park Naturalist here, and today we're going to talk about some very elusive creatures, and that's going to be our New Jersey native owls. So we don't have any live owls here at the Nature Center, so we're going to be using some um, knickknacks like skulls and wings to take a look at these animals and some taxidermied specimens that we have here. So if you don't know what a taxidermy is exactly, it's an animal that was once alive and now it's been stuffed. Now I want to assure all of our viewers that we don't kill any of these animals on purpose just to have a taxidermy at our nature center. Most of the time they either die of natural causes or maybe something happened like an accident, like they were hit by a car, and then we get um, taxidermies donated to us. So we have, um, you know, places like nature centers and museums use taxidermy so people can take a look at these animals up close when they normally normally wouldn't get to see them in the wild. So I've only seen an owl probably two or three times in the wild, personally. Um, and that's because, like I said, they're really elusive. They, they mostly come out at nighttime. So having taxidermies is a great way to, to see them up close. So in New Jersey, we have eight native species of owls. Depending on the time of year, you might see different, different species. Um, and if you live um, you know, near um, a wooded area, you might have heard some owls calling in your backyard. Um, so we've got lots of different shapes and sizes of owls here. The one that we're most familiar with is the great horned owl, and they have those, uh, those ears on top of their head. We'll talk about their ears in a little bit. But these are the owls that you think of, you know, when you first, you know, when, you, when owls come to mind. They've got those big eyes. They have these amazing large talons to help grip their prey. And they make that hoo hoo sound that we're all so familiar with. Over here we have an eastern screech owl. And these are native to New Jersey as well. Owls are usually more active in the winter time because that is the breeding season. But these eastern screech owls can come um, in the beautiful rusty red color that you see here. And they also have a gray color morph as well. And over here we have this little sawwet owl. So this is the smallest species of owl in New Jersey. And this is the, a fully grown adult, and they get their name from the sound that they make. It kind of sounds like a flute, and it's the sound that a saw makes when it's being sharpened. So they are nocturnal, like I said, and they have lots of really cool adaptations so they can thrive at nighttime. Um, one of those adaptations is you probably notice those giant eyes that they have. It's one of the first things that people notice when they look at an owl. Their eyes are huge compared to the size of their body. So those eyes are needed to help the owls hunt for prey at night. They are carnivores. So depending on the size of the owl, depending on the species, a little guy like this sawwet owl might eat large insects like grasshoppers and moths, maybe some small voles and mice. And a larger owl like the screech owl might pick up a frog, maybe a little lizard or a snake. And these great horned owls can pick up something like a squirrel. They might even eat smaller species of owls. So when we do um, owl walks or owl prowls in the wintertime here at Caddis, um, we will call for the owls. We do have um, great horned owls and screech owls um, in the park. And we will call for the screech owl before we call for the great horned because um, the great horned owls will actually go after the, the screech owls. Um, so great horned owls are also one of the few natural predators of skunks. <laughs> Even though they have great hearing and great eyesight, their smell is not that great, so the, the sneaky skunk smell doesn't bother them so much. So they have these huge powerful eyes, and you can see this is a replica skull of a great horned owl. And it almost looks like a pair of binoculars. So their eyes are so large that they need to have really big muscles to accommodate those eyeballs. So they actually can't move their eyes inside their head. So you and I can look left and right, up and down, without moving our head. But an owl can't do that. They have to turn their entire head left or right if they want to see to either side. So they have a very flexible neck, lots of little vertebrae in there. So if they want to check out something, they'll have to turn their head all the way around. So you might have seen videos of owls spinning their head. It looks like it's turning a full 360 degrees. It's not going all the way around or else their head would pop off. <laughs> but they can turn their heads almost all the way around to get a, a good look of their surroundings. Another sense that they have that allows them to capture their prey is their amazing sense of hearing. 
So their face is kind of shaped like a satellite dish. If you're listening for a sound, you might cup your ear to try to get a sense of what direction it's coming from. And owl's face is kind of shaped like that satellite dish to help funnel the sound towards their heads. Now, their ears are not those little tufts that you see sometimes on great horned owls or screech owls. Those are just modified feathers. Um, scientists aren't really sure why they have those might be to help them kind of camouflage to break up the shape of their head, or maybe it's just to look a little more intimidating to other owls, we're not sure, but those aren't their actual ears. Their ears are kind of hidden inside those feathers on the side of their head. And unlike our ears that are symmetrical, we have ours even on both sides. An owl's ears are kind of lopsided, so they'll have one ear a little bit higher than the one on the other side. So they're, they're kind of one up high, one up low. And what that does, it allows them to triangulate or pinpoint the exact location of a sound. So put yourself on one end of a football field and put a foot of snow on the ground. So if you were an owl, you could hear a mouse all the way across that football field under a foot of snow. That's how amazing their hearing is. Um, so I know sometimes if I'm in a room and the layout's kind of weird, I can't tell exactly where a sound was coming from, and I will be able to pinpoint it because of the, the lopsidedness of those ears. Now, if they're hunting, nighttime it's, it's pretty quiet, right? They need to be able to sneak up on their prey because there's not a lot of other sounds going on. So if you've ever had a bird fly a little close to your head, a little too close, um, you might have heard that whooshing sound that their wings make when they flap. So I'm not sure if the camera is going to pick up this little detail here, but owls have a, an edge to the front of their wing here. It's kind of like a fine tooth comb. See that feathered edge. And that breaks up the, the wind. It breaks up the air whooshing over their wings so they can fly silently. So they can sneak up on a little mouse or a squirrel and scoop it up with their talons and have a meal. So a great way you can demonstrate this at home is if you were to take a smooth rope or maybe even like a plastic jump rope, if you whirl that around your head, you'll hear that whooshing sound. If you can then take more of a, a feathered rope or one that's more frayed, and if you spin that around your head, that will be silent. Just make sure you do that uh, in a nice open area with no one around, don't wanna whack anyone in the head. But that's something fun you can try at home. So once they do catch their food, you see this nice looking little ball of hair right here? That is an owl pellet. And essentially, it's owl puke. <laughs> if anyone has a cat at home, and after they've groomed themselves a little too much, they might cough up a hairball, that's essentially what an owl does. So an owl doesn't have the luxury of choosing what it swallows. If it, pick, if it picks up a mouse, it will probably gulp that mouse down whole. And they don't have opposable thumbs like we do to help pull apart their food and pick out those bones and fur. So they end up swallowing those things that their tummies can't really digest so well. So after a couple of meals, maybe once or twice a day, their, their tummies are going to form kind of like a little, a little hairball of, of bone and fur. It's kind of like a trash compactor in there. So it's gonna tumble all this stuff around in their belly turn it into a nice neat little ball and they're going to cough that up. And if you look closely, you can see those bones in there. And if you maybe you've done this in, in class already, or you might do this in the future, um, but we can actually dissect these owl pellets. We can pull them apart and examine the, the bones that are in here so we can see what they've, what they've been eating. So you might find a full um, rodent skeleton in there, which can look really cool. So once we've pulled that apart and taken all the hair off, we can get a look at all of those little bones rattling around in there. It's a little, little weird, but kind of cool too. So if you're ever walking in the woods and you come across a couple of these owl pellets on the ground, take a look up and there's probably an owl nesting in that tree. They like to nest in old forests um, because those old dead trees provide open spaces and homes for them. So owls are mostly cavity nesters, so they like those, those dead trees where they can find a home and, and hide during the daytime. Um, so I hope you guys have learned uh, a lot about owls today. <laughs> um, we've got, um, we're gonna put up some games that you guys can play at home. 
Um, so we're going to post those on our Facebook page and on the YouTube page um, so you guys can see how good your nocturnal senses are. So you can be like nocturnal animals. So if you have a nice mild night, you guys can go outside and, and have some fun with your families and play some fun games. Um, so if you have any questions about our owls, my name is Megan Zorns and I, uh, you can leave those um, questions in the comments section and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Um, our next session this Friday at 11 a.m. is going to be with Miss Nikki and she's going to be giving you guys a virtual tour of our Cooper Environmental Center. Um, so thanks for joining us and we'll see you on Friday. Thanks.